Welcome back. A big story in SNAP this afternoon. The shares are down more than 23% after their first ever earnings report. They're trading around $17.65 right now. Let's get some reaction. We have a full cast and crew here to talk about this. Ryan Payne is here from Payne Capital Management. He's a little bit more bearish on SNAP. Uh, Sean Siefel is here from Navy Capital, who's a little bit more bullish. And Matt Britton of CrowdTap to explain how you use this thing still, Matt. Um, but thank you for being with us. So let me start, Sean, with you and, and the prospects that you see for SNAP. Here, and how much of a disappointment you think today is? I think this is an example of where sentiment just didn't match the reality. You had the syndicate sell side firms coming out, basically telegraphing this quarter on every single metric, ARPU, users, revenue. And the reality is the street expectations were just too high. I think nothing here is new. There's so nothing to change the Average revenue cases. per user. But you, you said you made it sound like they knew what the numbers were going to be, but actually they, they didn't. They were too high. So No, the, the banks that were on this deal were spot on. If you look at their numbers, got it, got it, it came in exactly where. And everybody else didn't come down to meet them. Everyone else was above for some reason. Is, but is, that's not a big deal. That's recoverable. Is there a fundamental problem here that they didn't post higher revenue, for example? I don't think this is fundamental. I think this is technical and sentimental. And that's why I think you're seeing the reaction here is people were positioned for a much higher expectation. Okay. Ryan, what, what would you yeah. say to that? I totally disagree. All due respect, Sean. Um, I think the problem is Facebook is eating their lunch. Um, you know, Instagram has this new stories model, which has already, since August, 200 million active daily users, whereas I think it came in at 166 million active users for Snapchat. So it just goes to show you. They're already on it. And I'll just say anecdotally, uh, most of my colleagues are millennials, and they're seeing less and less people on Snapchat, a lot of people migrating over to stories. Matt, are you picking up on that shift as well? I mean, I've been picking up on it for a very long time. I mean, I think the reality of Snapchat, there's the numbers, there's a story behind the numbers. The story behind the numbers is that Snapchat is a point solution for the young jet demographic. Uh, they use it for one-to-one -one ephemeral messaging. Once people's parents and grandparents got onto Facebook, they jumped on Snapchat because they didn't want to text things that would come back to haunt them. <laughs> then Snapchat launched Stories, which is their one-to-many approach. But in some ways, that was actually copying Instagram and Facebook, which had a one-to-many feed approach. Instagram tweaked the model a little bit, added a story. The other thing Snapchat added was Discover, which is a publishing media channel. Young people don't want to go to Snapchat for that. It's a point solution, and I don't. I think that's where the biggest uh, misalignment is. And my guess, we're talking. The shares are now down 25 percent. Uh, and, and by 17. now, it's worth mentioning that the IPO wow. itself priced at 17. Yeah, yeah. that's right. 17, so basically, 20, you've right gotten now. rid of all the yeah. aftermarket gain. Uh, and I do think the question, yeah. you know, to your point, is: is there is there a second act? Uh, if we're not just going to have advertisers say, "Look, I don't know why this." works but let me just throw money because that's right. the young demographic we can't otherwise reach if that's not going on what does the company need so to do? there needs to be a second act because in the one-to-one -one messaging it's a, not a native format to place advertisements in right. people don't want advertisements in the middle of their text messages is there a second act it's gonna have to come through an acquisition much like Facebook acquired Instagram or Google acquired you uh, YouTube what's, et cetera. what's the cool well I mean there's yeah. augmented reality there's yeah. mobile there, there's there's uh, you know artificial intelligence there are things out there the spectacles it's a play but I think it's more of a novelty right now it's not going to drive mainstream revenue growth. It's a one-trick pony, right? And at this valuation, it's just so overvalued right now that who's going to want to buy it at this level? You know, you know over $20 billion today, and they're losing their bleeding money, let's face it. So what uh, would you say? I'm going to push back here and say when we get the new iPhone and 3D sensing, all of their tricks are coming out of the bag. You're going to start seeing the augmented reality. You're going to start seeing much more interactive and inact. In, but what, you know. what is Snapchat going to offer on that front that Facebook, who just did a whole developers conference about this, won't? Look, you've seen some wins out of Snapchat. You saw the geo filter pattern win. And you've seen, and I point people to seeimagine.com, an acquisition they made a little over a year ago, where you can actually bridge the inanimate and the animate. And we're going to start seeing more of that on the ad side in filters and in other pictures. So yeah. this, the shares are just above their IPO price, about $17. Where do you think this company should be valued? Look, I think at this price, it's definitely worth getting your toe in if you're not there. And I think historically, you've seen on most of the large hot tech IPOs, similar day one performance on earnings, and most have done very well. What's your price target for the shares? I think from here, we go back to the mid-20s pretty soon. And I, so then I'll let Matt weigh in on that. If, they, if, if Snap is able to come out with something that's a little bit more exciting and allows you to kind of play with yeah. uh, augmented reality and so forth, does that 
Does that do it? Does that it's an ex That's an experimental marketing budget. Most yeah. traditional Fortune 500 marketers are still wiggling away at broadcast television to go into digital. For them to go to digital to augment a reality, we're talking five, ten years out. There's no ROI. There's a proven model there. And the programmatic model of being able to target Joe's Pizza, everyone within a mile of that that Facebook and Google have, that's really where the magic is. And the magic is also in that all the brand marketers use Google. All the brand marketers now use Facebook personally. I don't think anybody at this table from just asking anybody here uses Snapchat, right? <laughs> Most marketers don't. Old. And that's the biggest <laughs> issue. So many people that are calling the stock hey, don't let's use not it. Let's forget yeah. the live partnerships, too. They have the NBC Universal investment. We haven't seen anything from that yet. They have 40 Discover partners. They haven't done a great job of monetizing that yet. But we're going to start seeing the live content, NBC, ESPN, Vice. It's coming. We got to go, so Ryan will give you the last word. I would just say, you know, I would say right from the stock, the bubble's going to burst. It's not if, it's when. There's uh, great opportunities globally to invest your money with much lower valuations. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Ryan Payne, Sean Siefel, Matt Britton on a very much battleground stock, especially after these earnings. Really appreciate it. Right. Great to be here.